Hey gamers, all right, we're on to our second player for my Thursday game group. We're gonna create his character and see how it turns out. All right gamers, so here we are with our next player in our Thursday group for my Mutants and Masterminds game that I'm gonna be running. Um, this is Kazzy, say hello. Hi guys. Excellent. Um, so he's uh, created a pretty unique character. Um, he did have one we worked on a little bit ago. He decided to go with something new, uh, which we're going to talk about here during the character creation, uh, about his thoughts of uh, why he went from one concept to another. Um, especially if you're newer players, it might give you some ideas of, you know, you create a character, maybe it's good, but maybe you want something else. Is it something you should do, something you want to do? We'll kind of get his thoughts on why he made the switch. Maybe that can help you out. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and jump on over here into roll 20. All right, so we got a character sheet here. Let me make it a little bigger here so everybody can see it. Okay. All right. All right, Kazzy, so why don't you walk us through uh, this character? Let me get to the stat page first, the main page. So why don't you talk us through this character, what it can do, and why you decided to take um, your powers and your abilities and how you spent your points. Uh, sure. Well, uh, this guy's name is James Bishop. He... Uh... He's a psychic. He's able to get in basically his power to remove the power of mind. He is a very sociable, very social and interactive, charismatic person. He uh, has a presence of one. Uh, to reflect that, he's not extraordinary out of the league when he's not using his powers. He is above average on the intellect as well. He's able to think on the fly and uh, has an eidetic memory as well. And uh, most of uh, his most um, remarkable quality is his awareness. He's always depending on what is around him and who is around him. That way he can basically use uh, his abilities to the most advantage for him. Uh, the original concept that I had was a type of shaman character uh, in touch with the spirit of verse. Uh, he was more a melee oriented character. But um, that's the type of player that the type of character that I always play uh, in Dungeons and Dragon. I'm always the fighter or the paladin, always in the middle of the hit in the battle. And I wanted to change a little bit of that. And I was reading through the uh, Power Profiles book and trying to come up with different ideas of what I could play. And I stumbled upon the uh, mental powers and that gave me the idea of this character that would be more like a social guy that would be able to walk, uh, who, who would be able to talk out of any situation uh, thanks to his powers. Okay. So, all right, so you're saying that you normally play like a melee character or close combat yeah. character. Um, yeah. Is this now, have you played like these type of characters, like a mental or ranged? Um, uh, I mean, I once, play, I once played a ranger, but that's it. I mean, it's like uh, kind of a new experience for me. Okay. Now, so obviously there's going to be people some watching that maybe they're thinking of trying a new role as well, same as you're doing. Uh, what are some of your fears going into this or, you know, your, um, like you're going to be outside of your, your usual niche of how you play. Um, what are you, what are you worried about in the game that might be difficult for you? Uh, well, the first thing that comes up to my, uh, to mind regarding this would be uh, forgetting that I'm, completely a, ga a glass cannon here and jumping into the fray of the battle instead of uh, being a little bit more cautious with my uh, low uh, resistance. That's the main thing regarding uh, that. Regarding uh, uh, the role playing, I'm actually not that um, afraid of making that many mistakes because usually they, the characters I play tend to have a little bit more of charisma if we're speaking about Dungeons and Dragons. So I think I'll be able to play that. Okay. Cause I know like when I first started, I played a, you know, a certain type of character and then, you know, stepping out of that role out of that shell into something completely different. 
Um, it's a, it, it can be a big leap in your role playing skills. Um, but if you feel confident, I'm excited to see how this character is going to grow and how it's going to interact um, with the other party members because we're going to have a very interesting is I think is the phrase I want to use a very interesting group of uh, characters in the game. Yeah, so far it's looking interesting. All right. Um, so okay, so yeah, we covered the main page. Everything looks pretty good. Um, yeah, you got your defenses here. So yeah, your will save is really high, right? To reflect your your mental strength. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you're gonna use mental powers. You're probably not gonna be as susceptible to them. But you you did yeah, you did say glass cannon, right? You have a low toughness. Um, no parry at all, but your dodge is still pretty good, so you could potentially dodge um, range attacks. You just, like you said, avoid uh, getting into those melee confrontations when you shouldn't be. Um, so let's go on to powers, advantages, and equipment tab. So why don't you uh, why don't you talk us through your power selection and why you chose them and what they do? Uh, definitely. Uh, well, the first thing that I wanted, uh, first thing I did was to think of how he would develop in combat and what I wanted him to be uh, because I already had the idea of like the uh, how he would be playing out in social circumstances and what he would be doing so what I wanted was a work out what combat ability he would be having and I was thinking he is not that much of a fighter actually he's the kind of guy that would avoid conflict and try to calm the moods and try to talk everything out. So uh, that's when I saw the emotion control power. So uh, most of the times he would be using this emotion control to bring down uh, his enemies to a calm uh, state of mind or a depressive state of mind so that they would not feel comfortable attacking him. Okay. That that paired up with the uh, illusion that he has, the telekinetic illusion that affects all senses, would create situations that the enemy would not feel comfortable displaying a brute force, like, I don't know, kids watching or some sort of that. Okay. Or a witness that would not be uh, something easy to explain to someone else of why you're beating a guy. All right, I uh, like that. They seem to play well with each other. Exactly. And in addition to that, as he's able to uh, read the mind, with the mind reading five, uh, he would be able to tell exactly what the best option on illusions would be. Okay, so you read the mind, get the idea of what kind of illusions to create to best fit the individual. Then you create the illusions and also maybe help with the emotional control as well so you can understand his state of mind at the current pace. All right. Okay. Exactly. And uh, the last two powers, the mental awareness, he's able to sense uh, basically what's going on around him so that he's, uh, as I mentioned, aware at, at all times of who is around him. Mm -hmm. And the mental blast is like his last resort, the dagger under the, the cloak just to make sure that in case that he gets in combat, he gets this uh, flash of damage to the mind of the enemy just to uh, distract them more than a real harm and be able to back out. Okay. That sounds good. I like that. Instead of, you know, instead of, like, because we kind of talked beforehand about, you know, did you put points into making it hit well? You're like, no, but here's why. You know, because most people would take an attack power and put points into making sure it hits well, but would that fit character? This power seems to fit your character very well. Yeah, it's more like, a, like a, oh shit, I got to get out of here. <laughs> You're like, just just bombard their brains with, with bad emotions or whatever, just whatever you need to do. Incapacitate yeah. them so you can run away. All right. Exactly. So now let's let's talk about advantages. Talk talk, talk about what you picked and uh, why you, why you chose them. Uh, definitely. Well, uh, on Kenny Dutch, uh, I go with that because of the mental awareness. I mm -hmm. think as he would be aware of what's going around him, it would not be easy to uh, catch him out off guard. Uh, okay. That's why I chose the uncanny Dutch. Um, the days with deception uh, would be a role playing situation as he's able to read the mind and be able to play around with that, he would be able to bluff uh, his way out of thing and uh, in 
immobilize his his enemies a little bit, and will the with the uh, great mental power he has, uh, he has an eidetic memory that will allow him to remember pretty much everything he has seen, and okay. also a get some expertise skill without the need to spend points on it. Awesome. And uh, the final one that is attractive on two, I uh, thought that uh, a good word with a pretty face actually goes further than just the pretty words. Yes, yes they do. If, if you look well and speak well, people have a tendency to want to listen and change their disposition. I like how this you've chosen a lot of stuff that's very, very themed toward a character. Every choice you made is made toward um, building this character as it would be instead of just throwing stats on a page, you know, because a lot of people that start out, you know, like some of you viewers may be coming here asking a lot of questions about starting with mutants and masterminds and things like that uh, might be tempted to just, you know, take this sounds cool. This sounds cool. This sounds cool. You know, but really like do what Kazzy's done here, right? Think of the, the character that you're trying to create and pick things that would make this character what you envision instead of just taking stuff that you would think would be good statistically. So now we're going to talk about, so the, you know, so we, we, we talked about the, um, the, the bear shaman you had initially, right? And you okay. talked about how you, you made the switch. Now, why did you make the switch? I know you wanted to maybe chain, change up your, your roles a little bit. Um, but what made you decide to kind of step out of that one role to this, to this new role? Okay. Uh, well, there were a couple of things. The, the major thing was to try something new especially since I'm coming into Mutants and Mastermind for the first time. It's like a good opportunity to switch all together from my usual Dungeons and Dragon Pathfinder style. Mm -hmm. So a new game, new style of, of, of gaming, that would be uh, like the main focus. And uh, the second thing is uh, we were uh, discussing, uh, the other players and I, we were like uh, chatting a, a little bit of how we were working out. And at one point, it seemed that it was too unbalanced toward the Middle East side. And we had no much of a support and not uh, a charisma base, uh, a, a, a party face. So mm -hmm. uh, that's what uh, finally decided me to switch over to this concept. OK, cool. And now, are you happy with this concept? We've talked about it before. So but for the people that are going to watch this, and see how you've created are you happy with the character is there anything that you would change or where do you see this character uh, evolving and progressing as you get more points like what would you spend it on okay uh, well first of all i'm really happy with it uh, it's something that i thought for basically since i heard about the campaign i was like with these two concepts on the mind i'm really excited to be able to play in it and for the future, I think he might be able to spend some points on improving the metal, the mental damage, that he, the mental blood that he will be able to uh, train as they get more involved in combat and uh, develop a little bit more on the powers on the mind so that he would be able to, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, telekinesis between the groups so that they don't have to speak the commands out loud and they would be able to chat uh, and get better in touch. And basically keep growing with the mental powers and the ability to shape uh, the situations in his favor, but still no combat, uh, no melee situations for him. Okay, awesome. See, and that's another thing, you know, like people come into the game, they'll, they'll create a character, but maybe they don't have a plan for the future of the character. Um, the fact that you already have an idea of where you're going to spend your next few points one, it makes that part of the game easier. You already know where you're going to spend points, or you're going to wait, okay, I need X amount of points, I'll wait till I get that, I'll improve this, instead of just being like, oh, well, what would be cool, right? You're kind of sticking with the same theme, you're just, you know, going through the game, and obviously certain abilities will get stronger as you use them more and more, and you've already thought of that, which is pretty great. Now, let's talk about um, backstory. Okay. okay. So I have it on, I have it on a, the PDF over here. So okay. um, So I've kind of read through it. So why don't you why don't you kind of tell us what your backstory is for this character? 
Okay. Uh, well, uh, James is adopted. Uh, he doesn't know who his biological parents are. He was just left at a church when he was about 10 months old. And uh, he was uh, on orphanage and foster homes until the age of three, when he was finally adopted by his current parents that are uh, the ones that grew him and taught him basically everything. And um, their names are Kendrick and Linda Bishop. Uh, they register him under their last name. And he grew up with them uh, Ever since he was uh, young, he was always handsome and charming. As he was continued to growing, he developed and work on both of these situations. So he was able to uh, get a little bit more of uh, face and charisma as he grew up. Um, he currently finished college uh, with a major in media and communications. And he's currently working for a nonprofit organization called Together for the Children. It's a fake uh, organization. It's not okay. real. And uh, what they do is basically they take care of uh, getting better educational options for kids in Latin America and Africa. He works there as a – he takes care of getting donations for the uh, – for this organization. So he makes appointment, goes to talk with people and convince them to give them uh, money to help. Uh, and this is where he actually shines because I mean, uh, he's handsome. He's able to walk through normal situation because of his face. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to read the mind and con emotional, uh, co emotionally control the people that you're speaking with and make them feel guilty for having the luxury they have it's easier for you to get the money. So he's actually been doing that for quite a, uh, a time now. And he's currently living with his girlfriend, Natalie. Uh, she also works in the same organization as he does. And uh, she and his parents are the only ones so far that know of these abilities that he has. Okay. Um, so your so your parents and your girlfriend that uh, Natalie here that know of your abilities, uh, what was their disposition? So like we've kind of talked about um, the story of the of the of the game is going to be like like uh, metahuman superhero you know superhuman superpowered individuals is kind of like a like um, a taboo thing like it's not it's not something you go around telling. Um, I'm still wor working on all the details, but I'm probably going to have some kind of like like a registration or the government's going to be keeping tabs on people uh, because of events that will, that I'll go over when we first play um, in the um, exposition there about how the world is led up to where the game is going to start. Mm -hmm. um, how was their, how was their disposition learning your abilities? Were they um, embracing with it? Were they fearful? Um, how did they take it initially? Well, uh, his father was a little bit fearful of the, the what uh, this kid that he adopted could become, mm -hmm. as uh, as he uh, as uh, James kept growing and proving that he was actually not uh, doing uh, wrong with his powers. He became used to. He's not happy about it. Uh, Kendrick, his father, he's not happy about it. But I mean, he's like, okay, at least. He's not doing anything good, anything bad with them. No, mm -hmm. uh, his mother Linda was uh, comprehensive. Uh, his sister used to be a superhero before she was uh, killed uh, in this uh, situation that you told us that uh, they were like uh, registered, forced to hiding, and everything. Mm -hmm. Her sister was killed during this process, uh, so she's. Uh, she's okay with the power thing. She's just concerned and worried of what the future might be for for his now uh, son. Now, when you say sister, we talk. This would be like your like adopted My, sister, right? It would be like Kendrick and Linda's like biological um, yeah, daughter. Yeah, it would be James. Uh, no, it would be James's uh, aunt. It's uh, Linda's sister. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, 
Now, through the through the course of the game, right, there's going to be, like, because I'm running in, like, a grayscale, dark kind of themed game, and there's going to be a lot of these scenarios where you're going to have to, to deal with potential maybe death and loss um, of people in your, like, in your, like in your character's life. Um, mm -hmm. How do you think your character is going to deal with things like that? Uh, I'm sorry, Brian, the, the communication cut off. I couldn't hear the question. Okay, you're good. So um, during the course of the game, there's going to be times when there may be, like maybe you, your character will maybe lose someone close to them um, in the game um, through certain means. And because the game's going to be kind of dark, gray, gritty, uh, real. Um, how is your character going to be able to handle um, those situations like of loss and rejection from society? Um, throughout the course of the game. How is he going to handle that emotionally? Well, uh, regarding that, I think he would be able to handle it, let's say, okay. Uh, he has a strong mental resistance, so he would be able to uh, work work that out. It's, uh, after all, a natural thing that. Uh, what I think it's going to be a little bit more complicated to him is the rejection from society. Especially since he's a charisma-based uh, personality, he's not used to uh, an actual rejection from a large crowd. He's mm -hmm. actually a, a used to be able to switch their mood quickly. So this inability of him to be able to control the society's mind sort of thick is actually going to be complicated for him. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see some of the stuff I'm going to throw at you guys because with the reason why I want backstories is so I can have these kind of things to work with, you know, friends and family and um, all these, uh, be able to give you all like little storylines specific to you that are going to help your characters grow, like on an mm -hmm. emotional level, um, yep. which is really, you know, how I like to tell stories. It's not going to be all about just combat and punching the bad guys in the face especially not in this world that I've developed, it's going to be like, how are you going to sway society um, to not hate you? How are you going to deal with loss if it happens? How are you going to work together um, when no one, when every, like everything in the world seems to be against you? How are you going to rise above all of that and still do the good thing? Um, mm -hmm. That's when I'm excited to see how you guys are going to, going to handle that. It definitely sounds interesting. Sounds cool. pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited. So we're going to play some next Thursday. Um, mm -hmm. That's when we're going to start. Um, so the time frame is looking at um, talking with um, the rest of you. Like It looks like 9, 9 p.m. like Pacific Standard Time mm -hmm. seems to be um, the time when everyone is going to be on and available. Is this correct? I think so. Let me take a quick look on the Discord. Uh, yeah, it seems it's a, a nine specific time. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, so everyone and um, if everyone could be on maybe like ten or fifteen minutes prior, or at least like logged yeah. in and stuff and be ready. Uh, we'll get in the chat. We'll go. I'll go over like rules that I'm gonna have because I always have house rules for my games. I'll go over all of that. Um, I'll have a handout in Roll20 that I'll have all that stuff uh, prepared. I just, with my schedule of work this week, with the big event coming up this weekend, I have to work. Um, I didn't have as much time to get everything prepared. Uh, because, But I want I want handouts, I want tokens, I want everything ready um, so we can just get in the game and just have a great story. Also, I would like, um, if you can get me like a picture of what your character... Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm working on it. Yeah, what he looks like. Send uh, Put that in Discord and then I'll use that um, to create your token for the game. So we can okay. have that already. And then, so then one more question. And so, um, looking back then at how you created the character, anything that you would change? That I would change from mm -hmm. the, for the, for the character. Yeah. Just like if, you know, now that we've talked about it, we've gone over some stuff, it, it, you know, anything, cause everybody always has these, these small regrets on, oh, I maybe if I had an extra point here, or if I would have maybe done this, what would you, if you had to go remake this character, would you do it all the same, or would you make it a little different? Mm, I think I would basically do the same thing. Uh, definitely 
I mean, I like the the final outcome of the character, so mm -hmm. there's not much. Uh, sorry, there's nothing much I would change. Uh, maybe, and it's something that I was uh, discussing with the guys on the on the Discord. Uh, there is a power uh, for mental detection that helps you get a little bit more, uh, let's say, in depth for the mental awareness. That would be something that I would consider, but I was short on points by the end, so that's why I went with this. Okay. Yeah, the character looks great. I love it. I love the theme, backstory, all that stuff. I'm going to be great. Is uh, It's going to be great to get it in the game, and I'm excited to see how you're going to role play it. Wonderful. Cool. All right. So we're going to wrap this one up. So Kazi's got his character all done. That's the second one. Um, we've got two more two more players for our Thursday group that we're going to get uh, put together here. And then we'll have videos uh, for all of their character creation conversations just like this one. So stay tuned for those. And then next week, Thursday, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're going to start playing. First group of my Mutants and Masterminds campaign. So I hope you tune in for that.